Scarlett Johansson has come to challenge George Costanza for greatest bodysuit performance ever. Hello everyone and welcome to Movie Reviews by Josh. My name is Josh Terry and I am in a shell. I'm a ghost in a shell. Here to talk to you today about Ghost in the Shell, a movie which I recently saw. I haven't had a chance to get to the studio, so that's why I'm in my car in this automotive shell and a shell of despair. I was disappointed by this one. I was really let down. I was kind of excited about it. I haven't actually seen the uh, Ghost in the Shell from 1995 or the original comic uh, that this sprang from, and that might explain part of, I don't know, fans of this one, I'm kind of divided because I think fans of this one might really like it or they might hate it even more uh, than the normal people, ignorant people as myself. So I'll just get into it. Uh, for those who are uninitiated or those who are just curious, Ghost in the Shell is uh, Scarlett Johansson playing a cyborg named Major, uh, who is a human brain with a cyborg body. Um, she has fleeting memories of her normal human life, but as things go on, she begins to suspect that they might have been altered or tampered or just flat out not true. Um, now, she works as kind of a government agent, and she, conveniently enough, is investigating the murder of several people from the company that built her, um, a robotics company. Uh, this is set in the future. It's uh, very, very Blade Runner-ish. It, it, it has a very Blade Runner look to it. Uh, the soundtrack sounds like Tron. Uh, there's a lot of things that will remind you of Minority Report and Robocop and The Matrix, which isn't such a bad thing, but in this case it is. The, the, the movie, the story feels very redundant, feels very, we've been there but done that, um, even though the visuals are really amazing. And I'm not just talking about Scarlett Johansson in a bodysuit. Tell you the truth, she doesn't really spend a lot of time in that bodysuit, so if that's what you're going to see this movie for, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, the, the story, again, is just kind of... You know, she, as she's investigating this hacker who supposedly is the one who's behind the murders. Uh, she finds out more about her own past, finds out about the past of the robotics company that, that uh, built her. And it's kind of, it's more of a suspense, noir, detective movie than it is an action movie. And that's frankly disappointing because the, the trailers, the previews make this movie feel, you know, I, I went in anticipating much more of an action film. Uh, especially given Scarlett Johansson's background as, as Black Widow and in movies like Lucy, you kind of think this is going to be more of the same. And it's not. It's very plodding. It's very gradual. It, the story in the, it takes its time to such an extent that when things happen, the audience is already kind of two steps ahead of the plot. Um, things that are revelations are not very revelatory. And... It, there's a very ponderous tone that is obviously intentional. It's a, it's a stylistic decision, but it slows things down. And bottom line, it was kind of boring, uh, which surprised me. I did not expect to have that kind of reaction. There was kind of a, an awkward pause at the end of the movie in the, in the pre-screening before the credits rolled. And then a couple people started clapping in this big audience and it was kind of, okay, I guess, I guess that was it. So yeah, so depending on whether you are a big fan, um, in, in some ways I'm inclined to think that if you were a fan of the 1995 uh, anime, you're going to be disappointed by this as well because it doesn't seem to have the essence of what, what made that so celebrated. Um, if you don't have the background with those things, as I didn't, uh, your expectations are going to be a little thrown off. I mean, there's there's nothing, you know... It's not that the movie had to be action-packed from wall to wall and that, you know, I don't have any patience for a suspenseful reveal a bit at a time type of plot. The problem was the story just didn't give me anything worth waiting for, uh, frankly. And uh, so, yeah, so this one was a letdown, unfortunately. It looks fantastic. That's why I still wouldn't wind up giving this one two and a half stars out of four. Uh, it really, really looks cool. I mean, there, there are not just, I mean... The first thing that springs to mind is the city itself. Uh, it's, you know, it's a very Asian city. Presumably it's, you know, uh, the Tokyo of the future. Um, lots of cool holograms and all kinds of things going on. Um, but then there's a lot of uh, kind of stylistic choices as well, like when, uh, you know, when Major Deep dives into the mind, the hard drive mind of a uh, Geisha robot. You know, there's some things that they look, they look cool. And, and so I think it's worth consideration in that sense. Maybe as a matinee, maybe as a rental, I wouldn't spend full price to see this one. 
Ghost in the Shell is rated PG-13, mostly for your sci-fi action violence, which is, is pretty muted, not very graphic. Um, also, there is quite a bit of suggestive content in terms of Scarlett Johansson's character because it's, you know, it's kind of got the traditional Japanese sexualized female look. Um, if it makes a difference, she doesn't spend nearly as much time in the bodysuit as you might assume. It's really just kind of here and there in bits and pieces. Not a whole lot in terms of profanity. I don't really remember much of anything in, in that sense. So overall, yeah, this is pretty much a PG-13 movie. And judging from what I've heard and read about the original anime, people are probably going to be disappointed by that. Um, disappointed maybe by the whitewashing or not kind of like the idea of Scarlett Johansson playing an Asian character. Um, again, without having a background with the material myself, I just kind of came in brand new and walked away a shell with no ghost. So thanks again for watching. This has been Movie Reviews by Josh. My name is Josh Terry. Be sure to subscribe and keep your notifications on so you can see our new videos as soon as they are posted. And thanks as always to Rocky Gator, our uh, devoted sponsors and makers of fine waterproof backpacks, uh, which are convenient because it's, it's raining right now. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but more information. Enjoy!